Good morning. This morning I have a reading from Being in Balance by Wayne Dyer. Love is something that we desire, and why not? The more love we receive, the more we feel loved, and the better we feel. Feeling good, or God, is feeling balanced and in perfect harmony with our source of being. Obviously then, one of our highest and most fervent wishes is to be the recipient of an endless flow of love. So what creates this huge imbalance between what we desire and how we feel? D.H. Lawrence spells it out perfectly in the following quote. Those that go searching for love only make manifest their own lovelessness, and the loveless never find love. Only the loving find love, and they never have to seek it. As with all major imbalances, rebalancing always involves an energy realignment that isn't achieved by simply memorizing strategies or by adopting new behaviors. Rather, it's essential to know what kind of vibrational energy pattern patterns you're sending to your desires. In this case, your desire is to feel good by having as much love in your life as you can balance. And this can't be accomplished by demanding it or by seeking it from outside of yourself. This love is found within. I'm going to begin this morning by telling you about a, a story about this man who was walking across the road and a car struck him. This will end up kind of a happy story. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> I'm going to pull up the tissue. No. The impact was so severe that he found himself in a coma. Um, it took him a couple days before he regained um, consciousness. And when he opened his eyes, <clears throat> his wife was right there beside him. And he held her hand and he said to her, you know, you've always been beside me. When I was struggling through college and I failed again and again, you were always there beside me, um, encouraging me to keep on, to keep trying. And she squeezed his hand as he wanted to continue. He said, and then when I went on interviews to get a job, and I failed it to get any of those jobs. There you were, right beside me. And what you did was you cut out more ads so I could apply for more jobs. So then I started to work at a small firm, he said, and I finally had an opportunity for a really big contract. And I made a mistake and lost my job. And there you were, right beside me. So finally, after being unemployed for quite a long time, he said, I've got another job. And I work really hard, and I never seem to get promoted. My hard work is not recognized. So here I am in the same position today that I was when I first started this job. And there you are, right beside me. Her eyes at this point were obviously filled with tears. Those of us who are wives understand that, right? She's filled with tears as she's listening to her husband open his heart to her as he's lying there. And he wanted to continue. He said, now as I've had this accident and I've awoken, there you are, right beside me. And there's something that I'd really like to say to you. So, she threw herself on the bed, sobbing with tears, laying next to her husband, holding him, and what he said was, I think you really bring me bad luck. Thank you, Gina. So, I know, I love that. <laughs> How often do we do that though, right? Blame others for our stuff. So living a balanced life. Does living a balanced life mean that we are going to have a life full of only positive people and perfect events and everything that will bring us happiness in every single moment of our lives? Absolutely not. And no one's promising you that. 
That isn't what living a balanced um, life is all about. I can tell you, though, when we begin to live that balanced life, we feel a, a grand sense of peace, of harmony. When we can learn to take responsibility for our own stuff, unlike this guy, then that's when we are living in a place of beauty, of balance, of harmony, happiness. Now, balanced living might seem like one of those theoretical ideas that no one can actually pull off, that no one can really put into practice. However, living a balanced life can be very simple if we learn to live from our authentic selves, from that place of our essence, and not cover up who we are with all that baggage that we like to <clears throat> excuse me, pick up along the way and carry along with us. It takes work. That's just the truth. But once we get into that flow, we discover that we are truly free to be who we are at that deepest level. It is very empowering. You'll find that you are inspired and energized by every single day of your life. Life miraculously becomes full of all these amazing adventures, these events that help you remember each and every day of your life. You no longer have those feelings of, am I wasting my time? Or contemplate those so-called misfortunes that maybe you've picked up along the way. You see them differently now. You see those as gifts, as blessings, instead of misfortunes. So it's really a simple process to live a balanced life. Because all we really have to do is let go of all that baggage that's hanging around with us, right? All you have to do is let go of everything you've been taught about life, everything you've believed about yourself that isn't the truth. Is that simple? <laughs> that's what I think, too. Oh, yeah, and then we want to learn to maintain stable, positive relationships instead of sweating all that small stuff. Instead of creating drama, whether we mean to or not. In the long run, it certainly, and I know we all know this, it certainly isn't worth it to waste time being irritated with someone or something, right? Especially since we know, in capital letters, we know that when we throw that negativity out there, guess what? It comes right back. Nor does it, it doesn't feel good either when we do it, does it? especially when we get it back tenfold. That's just the law of attraction. And that's what that quote that Sue shared is all about from that D.H. Lawrence. Those that go searching for love only make manifest their own lovelessness. And the loveless never find love, only the loving find love. And they never have to seek for it. That quote is not saying that people are loveless. It's not about being loveless. It's about feeling and behaving in that loveless manner and attracting that right back to you. And doing that by feeling unappreciated, by feeling like it's an unloving world and no one cares about me. I'm going to go eat worms, right? Here's the really good news. It's reversible. And it's reversible simply by ending your search by stopping the seeking. Wayne Dyer always reminds us um, in a lot of things that he writes that by being a seeker, what we're doing is striving to attain something that's missing. And the reality is this, nothing's missing. You already have everything that you need within you. We just maybe aren't at a point of realizing that. So we tend to seek, and that's not what we want to do. All that means is that we're out of balance. All that means is that our thoughts are focused on one thing and our desires on another. So it's a little conflicted. It isn't working together. Our thoughts are focused on finding what's missing, and our desire in this instance with this quote is for finding that love to flow into our life. 
So we can't look for what's missing and expect love. The objective here is to be so full of love that that's all we have to give away. That's all that's inside. It's all about perception, isn't it? Successful people live in a successful world. Unsuccessful people live in an unsuccessful world. Isn't that true? Loving people live in a loving world, and hostile people live in a hostile world. What I find amazing is it's all the same world, right? People just see it differently. When they see it differently, they're experiencing it differently. And the only difference is in perception. And our perception becomes our reality. So the results that we are getting in life, our experiences, there are no accidents. What we're getting back through that law of attraction is based exactly on what's going on inside of us. If we want to make a change, we need to change that inside. And we change that inside by changing what we spend our time thinking about. What we spend our time <coughs> giving away. When we spend our time giving away and focusing on good things, then only good things will come out of us. Doesn't that make sense? We tend to make our lives and our relationships a little more complicated um, than we need to a lot of times simply because of past experiences. I don't know about you, but a lot of people out there, of course, tend to see the faults of others before they see the faults of their own. Okay, I know it's true for me. <laughs> I, I can find fault in someone else a lot quicker than I myself. I've gotten really good at catching myself at that, though. Sometimes we take things so personally that we go on the attack. We want someone else to hurt like we do. We want to take someone else down that rabbit hole with us. We do that, and it's just our ego, it's just our pride getting in the way, trying to take over. When we do that, though, we just go downhill from there. We get frustrated, we go into resentment, we go into mistrust, and it just keeps going. If we just stop and take a look, we can actually see that life is simply showing us what's going on inside for us, not for anyone else. That's none of our business. It just simply comes down to what we're prepared to do, what we're prepared to sacrifice in terms of our ego, or what we're prepared to give in terms of our heart. We can't claim, for instance, to love somebody unconditionally and then place conditions on them and then expect this to be a loving, respectful relationship. Nor is it reasonable for us to hold another person accountable for the decisions that we make in our life. Although it's sure easy to do, it's a temporary fix. We can only hold another person responsible for their actions. Hold them accountable for their decisions. For their own happiness, not ours. It's not anyone else's job to bring happiness to us. It is not anyone else's job to bring out the best in us. That is what we need to do for ourselves. It's our work to look inside, to find the strength, to find the love, to stand up for what, what it is we want in our life, for who we are. The biggest mistake that we tend as human beings to make in relationships is holding on to mistakes that other people make and wanting them to feel that same angst that we do. That man in that opening story wanted his wife to be just miserable like he was, didn't he? He needed to remain outside of himself. He didn't want to take responsibility for what was happening in his life. So much easier to give that to somebody else. <clears throat> So are we somebody who unconsciously promotes our own drama? 
When you are feel like you've been insulted, do you want to insult somebody right back? When you're disappointed, do you want that person to feel disappointment in return? If you want respect, you have to give it, even if you haven't received it from somebody. If you want love, you have to love the ones that are the hardest to love to get the greatest love in return. If you want more from life, from other people, be it love, friendship, loyalty, trust, time, you have to give that same thing out unconditionally, freely, without any expectation. Our friend Anonymous wrote this, love never fails. Only people do when they give up because they're not able to find the love they are holding within them. So many of us don't realize just how much love is in there or we know it and we don't know how to get it out. We don't know how to share it. Just give it. Just give it away. Live from that place of authenticity. Years ago, I either heard or read um, one of Wayne Dyer's um, books he was talking about, or whatever. Anyway, he was sharing an analogy about an orange, and that analogy captured my intention. And not only did it capture my intention, it has stayed with me ever since. It's one of those things that you hear and you just go, oh yeah, that's so true. And this is it. It's a simple metaphor. You take an orange, and you squeeze it as hard as you possibly can. And when you do that, what comes out? Orange juice. Right? I mean, that's like a, a, a no-brainer. Never, never, no matter how many times you squeeze it, will apple juice come out. Never. <laughs> right? You'll never get grapefruit juice out of that either. The reason orange juice comes out is because that's what's inside. We all know that it makes perfect sense. So now we're going to extend that metaphor to us. Someone squeezes you. Someone says something about you that you don't like or behaves towards you in a way that you find offensive. Maybe somebody does or says something that uh, you feel hurt by. And out of you comes what? Does it love come out? Does appreciation come out? Does anger come out? Does hatred, bitterness? What comes out of you when someone squeezes you like that? Immediately, do you say, the reason that comes out of me is because he said it, or because she did it, or said that? Do you place that blame outside of self? Because the reality is this, what's inside is what comes out when you're squeezed. Now, if you don't like what's inside, if you don't like what's coming out, change it. We can do that. We have that power. We have that ability. And the responsibility is always on the person doing the reacting, not the external stimuli. We are always responsible for our own actions, for our own reactions. <coughs> now, Dyer extends that um, idea just a little further, telling us that there is no difference between a saint or a higher functioning human being, a spiritual master or a spiritual teacher, and the rest of us. We're all the same. You know why? Because we all have unconditional love within us, and so do they. Here's the difference between an ordinary human, between ordinary human awareness and those with a higher awareness. They have nothing else inside of them except that unconditional love. They have learned to let go of the baggage that they've picked up along the way. They have that realization of being one with all. They have a respect for what matters in life. They're very clear. And they allow all the drama, all the baggage to fall by the wayside and begin fresh and new 
in each and every moment. And what I know is this, we all have the ability and the capability to do the very same thing, if we choose to. If we aren't coming from a place of peace when we are dealing with the world, be it family, be it friends, be it love, whatever, when if we aren't coming from a place of deep peace, then our attempts to share peace may just be fruitless. And the same thing goes for gratitude, for love, and for anything else a human being wants to feel and wants to experience. If you want to change what comes out of you when you're squeezed, open your heart to spirit. Open your heart to love. Only you can fill that internal space. And you do that by doing one simple thing. Ask love to make its presence known within you. Ask love to be who you are. Ask to have an awareness of being so full of love that that is all you have to share, all you have to give out. Ask and you shall receive. It is said everywhere. And it is the absolute truth. In all aspects of life, give because you can. Love because you feel it. And embrace humanity because you have embraced who you are, your very essence. Instead of arguing, let's learn to reason. Instead of becoming angry, let's learn to be peaceful. Love your life. Enjoy the amazing, incredible people that you are so blessed to have sharing this incredible journey. Because what I know is this, if we are going to give what it is, if we're going to get what it is we give, let's make sure we're giving every good thing we can. I'm going to close with this quote by Henry Miller. The one thing we can never get enough of is love. And the one thing we never give enough is love. Today is a blessing. And I invite you today to be that blessing. Thank you so much for being here while I share this truth as I understand it.